all right ladies and gentlemen we are finally live after two full weeks of me promising these videos here's the first video first video is for NAF the class is economics and financial services honors the course and what we're going to be doing for this first semester is going to be financial services and we're starting with the first unit of the class now remember your homework is just to watch the video uh like i said i'm not gonna keep this video too long it should not go over 30 minutes i'm keeping track right now on how much time we have so so far so good let us continue by the way, so you can just see what's going on. What you're gonna be seeing is exactly what I'm seeing on my screen and you'll just be seeing it next to me. So the NAV Academy of Finance, Financial Services, you're gonna be getting these handouts. So um, on Monday, first day of class, uh, I think we are a gray day. I will go ahead and I will hand these out to you. I believe there are 15 pages in total. Some pages are just like this. It's just an introductory page. There's nothing on it. I, I think there's a table of contents page. There's a few pages with nothing on it, but let me just let you know there's a packet and it will be turned in for a grade at the end of the unit. So once we're done with every bit of the lessons, um, all of the videos, everything else is finished, then I'll go ahead and I will grade those and those will go into canvas so you're gonna get this it's gonna be on the first page first page will look just like this and right below that you're gonna see these student resources these are the activities you're going to be doing now you'll see uh, student resource 1.3 is reading however 1.4 you have to do you have to write something based on what you've read so even though I cannot check to see if you've done 1.3, I can check 1.4 to see if you've actually read what you were supposed to read. Uh, 1.5 is a reflection. There's no wrong answers, but you must complete it. And then 1.6 at the end is just a listing of trends in financial services. We'll get to that point when we get there. So the first part of this course is going to be the example of what you're going to be doing at the end of this course. So the example of the culminating product, prod, product, project, we're going to try to make sure we get this done at the end of this semester. Hopefully, I mean, we're going to go at your pace. If it's too fast or if it's too quick of a pace to finish by that point, we're just going to go ahead and do that after uh, winter break. But hopefully we can finish this uh in this semester and then we can move on and do even more especially for those who want to finish their NAF track certification this year those seniors you do want to get more than one class done so let's read a little bit more about this at the end of the course your culminating project will be a presentation yes that does mean you have to stand in front of the class and that does mean you have to talk it's not long you're going to see the video for yourself I think the video is six minutes in total. I'm not asking you to stand in front of the class and do a 30 minute presentation, but you know, somewhere between five and 10 minutes is expected. Your presentation will focus on this college and career skill, developing awareness of your own abilities and performance. And the driving question for this project is how can we, you as company representatives develop two profitable financial services or financial products that respond to the needs of our community. So whatever you end up doing for this project has to be local to at least South Florida, but better yet would be Fort Lauderdale or Broward County, Florida. You will work in groups. So nobody's gonna be doing this project alone. Groups can be two, three, four, you know, you can decide that and I'll help organize the groups but ultimately this will be done in groups to respond to a request for proposal pretending of course from a city leader so we're going to see if we can find out a financial service or a financial product that will help either the city of fort lauderdale or help broward county as a whole and obviously you're not expected to know this information now this is information you're going to develop as we proceed through this course as far as what you're gonna hand in with your presentation, 
look at this. It says a one page summary. That's it. One page. So you have to do a one page executive summary that will highlight the financial services solutions based on the needs of your community. So again, based on at least South Florida, Broward County is better and even and Fort Lauderdale specifically would be the best way to do this. So watch, the, you're going to watch the video of the final presentation that you're going to be given at the end of the semester. Hopefully we can get to it in time for the end of this semester, especially for you seniors. In this video, you're going to see students acting as representatives of a financial services firm that is presenting a proposal to city leaders. The students in the, develop, in the video developed a response to their city's challenge of how best to serve a dramatically increasing population. After watching this video, again, I'm going to play the video twice. You will get another chance, obviously watch it in class when you're going to answer this question. So once again, you're not gonna be doing this at home for homework. We can start writing some notes down for homework to make classwork a little bit easier. The question you're going to ask is, what do you think you need to know about financial services and what skills do you think you need to have in order to complete this project or a project like this? All right, so what skills do you think you need and what information do you think you need to know about financial services before you can do this project? That's what you're going to be answering. That's what you're gonna be writing down and that's gonna be part of this graded packet. So with that being said, onto the video. I would like to begin by thanking each of you for being here today. About three months ago, we received a letter from the mayor's office requesting that we submit a proposal for a public-private partnership. The letter stated that the community of Fern Hills was interested in combining forces with a private firm with the intent of developing two financial services products that would serve the community's needs and be profitable in the process. Our efforts begin with some careful research about the Fern Hills community. According to the most recent data available, the two issues affecting Fern Hills community is the dramatic population increases of new families and children over the last few years. After a careful study of the specific aspects of the community, we have concluded that the city of Fern Hills has been experiencing a substantial population increase over the last three years and new families continue to move to the area regularly. This population increase is making it difficult for Fern Hills to adequately support its residents. The fact that Fern Hills is experiencing this increase in its population is encouraging, but needs to be planned for accordingly. Fern Hills needs to encourage entrepreneurs to start their businesses in our city and needs to support existing business owners with their expansion projects and operational costs. Fern Hills is in desperate need of a downtown revitalization project. The population of Fern Hills has increased nearly 11% in the past three years, and the downtown business district currently does not meet the needs of our residents. Residents are going outside the community to buy basic products and services. Additionally, families are not only looking for work outside of the community, but they are also traveling to nearby cities for many of their service and product needs, thereby re reducing the city's tax base. The current small businesses owners need cash to expand their businesses, and entrepreneurs are looking at Fern Hills as a viable place to locate. However, because economic times are tough and credit market is tight, many, in, many individuals are finding it difficult to obtain the capital needed to finance their dreams. We propose a small business loan program in an effort to improve and expand our downtown area. New startups and existing businesses will be encouraged to apply for our business loan. We will offer low fixed rates based on term length and credit history. Our term lengths are flexible and range from two, three, four, or five years. Our small business loans can be used to meet a variety of business needs and can help Fern Hills business owners expand or modernize operations as well as help entrepreneurs start new businesses from the ground up, creating new jobs and new opportunities for a growing population. We will also offer a number of loans guaranteed by the Small Business Administration. These include the 7A Loan Guarantee Program, which is designed to help entrepreneurs start or expand their businesses, and the Micro Loan Program, 
which provides up to $35,000 to small businesses who otherwise wouldn't qualify for a loan from a traditional bank. Because our loans are SBA approved, the guarantee portion of the loan can be sold to an investor or transformed into AAA rated government bonds. It's a win-win situation for both the community and the public-private partnerships. Another issue affecting Fern Hills that is related to the overall population increase is the number of children living in Fern Hills. In fact, the number of children living here has risen 7% in the last three years. Many of these new children are first-generation Americans who hope to be the first in their families to attend college, but who will face a challenge paying for it given the fact that the cost of college tuition and expenses are so high and continue to outpace inflation. In order to meet this need, we propose working with Fern Hills Bank to develop a student saving account called Fern Hills Youth Banking. Fern Hills Youth Banking will provide local students ages 10 to 17 with a high interest earning savings account. The interest rates are highly competitive with the introductory APY of prime minus 1% and require only a $100 minimum balance. Although profit will be modest by tying APY to just below the prime rate, profit is guaranteed. Additionally, Fern Hills Bank can anticipate $500,000 in deposits within the next five years, as well, as well as from future businesses from students as they graduate college. We will develop a partnership with the Consumer Federation of America and the American Sage Program to help promote saving and goal setting among students and their families. Fern Hills Banks will also offer automatic transfer services from checking accounts to help students build their savings portfolio. In an effort to encourage our students to save, we will offer incentives such as gift cards, restaurant vouchers, and even MP3 players for students who meet their college savings goals of $5,000, $10,000, and $20,000. We have contractual commitments with local merchants who want to promote college attendance and support this partnership, and so will provide these promotional items at no cost to the partnership. We are confident that the two products that we are recommending will help Fern Hills address some of the community's needs. Our small business loan program is uncommon in today's strictly, strictly regulated market and will help to revitalize the downtown area, creating a vibrant downtown city center to Fern Hills. The loans will bring more activity to the streets and attract more business to downtown establishments. From business expansion to storefront improvement, we hope to help and serve existing businesses while offering specialized loans and for entrepreneurs looking to start their own companies. With, with the increasingly competitive world economy, the strength of Fern Hills depends upon the education and skills of its workers. The number of jobs requiring for a college degree is growing at a rapid pace. Our saving program has been designed for the community and its unique features will help students and their families save for college more effectively. As you can see, this is a win-win proposal for all citizens of Fern Hills. We are committed to the economic health and development of our community by promoting the expansion and creation of small businesses and preparing our youth to make wise, lifelong financial decisions. Thank you for listening to our proposal. We hope that you choose us to help Fern Hills meet its needs. Welcome back. Like I said, we're going to be doing watching that video. And I said we're going to watch that video twice. But before we watch it the second time, I want to discuss that assignment, let you know what it's going to look like when it's in front of you. So this is going to be page three of that 15 page packet that I discussed. What do you think you need to know about financial services and what skills would you need to have in order to complete a project like this? So you're going to be filling this out. You have the whole page to write down whatever you think, all the skills you need to have and all the information you think you need to know about financial services in order for you to complete this project. OK, so once again, I'm going to play the video. Think of this question in mind in order to do what the students do in that video. What information do you think that you need to know? What skills do you think you need to have so that you can do what they did and you can get um, basically you can get an A in this class 
by being able to do what they did. But of course, your project will be focused here on South Florida, Broward County, and Fort Lauderdale. So video one more time. I would like to begin by thanking each of you for being here today. About three months ago, we received a letter from the mayor's office requesting that we submit a proposal for a public-private partnership. The letter stated that the community of Fern Hills was interested in combining forces with a private firm with the intent of developing two financial services products that would serve the community's needs and be profitable in the process. Our efforts begin with some careful research about the Fern Hills community. According to the most recent data available, the two issues affecting Fern Hills community is the dramatic population increases of new families and children over the last few years. After a careful study of the specific aspects of the community, we have concluded that the city of Fern Hills has been experiencing a substantial population increase over the last three years, and new families continue to move to the area regularly. This population increase is making it difficult for Fern Hills to adequately support its residents. The fact that Fern Hills is experiencing this increase in its population is encouraging, but needs to be planned for accordingly. Fern Hills needs to encourage entrepreneurs to start their businesses in our city and needs to support existing business owners with their expansion projects and operational costs. Fern Hills is in desperate need of a downtown revitalization project. The population of Fern Hills has increased nearly 11% in the past three years, and the downtown business district currently does not meet the needs of our residents. Residents are going outside the community to buy basic products and services. Additionally, families are not only looking for work outside of the community, but they are also traveling to nearby cities for many of their service and product needs, thereby re reducing the city's tax base. The current small businesses owners need cash to expand their businesses, and entrepreneurs are looking at Fern Hills as a viable place to locate. However, because economic times are tough and credit market is tight, many, in, many individuals are finding it difficult to obtain the capital needed to finance their dreams. We propose a small business loan program in an effort to improve and expand our downtown area. New startups and existing businesses will be encouraged to apply for our business loan. We will offer low fixed rates based on term length and credit history. Our term lengths are flexible and range from two, three, four, or five years. Our small business loans can be used to meet a variety of business needs and can help Fern Hills business owners expand or modernize operations as well as help entrepreneurs start new businesses from the ground up, creating new jobs and new opportunities for a growing population. We will also offer a number of loans guaranteed by the Small Business Administration. These include the 7A Loan Guarantee Program, which is designed to help entrepreneurs start or expand their businesses, and the Micro Loan Program, which provides up to $35,000 to small businesses who otherwise wouldn't qualify for a loan from a traditional bank. Because our loans are SBA approved, the guarantee portion of the loan can be sold to an investor or transformed into AAA rated government bonds. It's a win-win situation for both the community and the public-private partnerships. Another issue affecting Fern Hills that is related to the overall population increase is the number of children living in Fern Hills. In fact, the number of children living here has risen 7% in the last three years. Many of these new children are first-generation Americans who hope to be the first in their families to attend college, but who will face a challenge paying for it given the fact that the cost of college tuition and expenses are so high and continue to outpace inflation. In order to meet this need, we propose working with Fern Hills Bank to develop a student saving account called Fern Hills Youth Banking. Firm Hills Youth Banking will provide local students ages 10 to 17 with a high interest earning savings account. The interest rates are highly competitive with the introductory APY of prime minus 1% and require only a $100 minimum balance. Although profit will be modest by tying APY to just below the prime rate, profit is guaranteed. Additionally, Fern Hills Bank can anticipate $500,000 in deposits within the next five years, as well, as well as from future businesses from students as they graduate college. 
We will develop a partnership with the Consumer Federation of America and the American Sage Program to help promote saving and goal setting among students and their families. Fern Hills Banks will also offer automatic transfer services from checking accounts to help students build their savings portfolio. In an effort to encourage our students to save, we will offer incentives such as gift cards, restaurant vouchers, and even MP3 players for students who meet their college savings goals of $5,000, $10,000, and $20,000. We have contractual commitments with local merchants who want to promote college attendance and support this partnership, and so we'll provide these promotional items at no cost to the partnership. We are confident that the two products that we are recommending will help Fern Hills address some of the community's needs. Our small business loan program is uncommon in today's strictly, strictly regulated market and will help to revitalize the downtown area, creating a vibrant downtown city center to Fern Hills. The loans will bring more activity to the streets and attract more business to downtown establishments. From business expansion to storefront improvement, we hope to help and serve existing businesses while offering specialized loans and for entrepreneurs looking to start their own companies. With, with the increasingly competitive world economy, the strength of Fern Hill depends upon the education and skills of its workers. The number of jobs requiring for a college degree is growing at a rapid pace. Our saving program has been designed for the community and its unique features will help students and their families save for college more effectively. As you can see, this is a win-win proposal for all citizens of Fern Hills. We are committed to the economic health and development of our community by promoting the expansion and creation of small businesses and preparing our youth to make wise, lifelong financial decisions. Thank you for listening to our proposal. We hope that you choose us to help Fern Hills meet its needs. Welcome back. Like I said, that video is not long, six minutes. We just watched it twice. That's 12 minutes of this video. You know, we past the halfway point at this point. So I'm gonna finish off this video, giving you a little bit of background. Now this is a college level book. This is a university level book. So we're only going to be going through some of the first chapter. Uh, this information is quite relevant. I've actually discussed some of this in the freshman classes. So there should be no problem with your class. The book is called Finance Applications in Theory, second edition from Marsha Millen Cornett, Cornett, Troy A. Adair Jr. He's in a lot of books. Troy Adair Jr. writes a lot of financial books. And John Nofsinger from Washington State University, published by McGraw-Hill Irwin. So we're just going to be looking at chapter one, the introduction to financial management. So you have a better idea of what we're going to be talking about in this course. This is a question that maybe we'll discuss in class. Maybe we have some time. We will discuss this in class, but you're not expected to know the answer until basically you finish the end of this unit. It sees at the bottom, it says, see the solution on page 24. But this will give you a good example of a business and a personal application. And the personal one is a lot more relevant to what we're going to be doing in this class. So it says Caleb has worked very hard to create and expand his juice stand at the mall. He has finally perfected his products and he feels he is offering the right combination of juice and food. As a result, the stand is making a nice profit. Caleb would like to open more stands at malls all over his state and eventually all over the country. Caleb knows he needs more money to expand. He needs money to buy more equipment, buy more inventory, and hire and train more people. How can Caleb get the capital he needs to expand? Those freshmen who are in my IGCSE business studies slash business communication and technology class, they're going to be going through that. When we get to that unit, when they have to start figuring out where they're going to get the money to fund their businesses, every student is coming up with a business in that class and they have to figure out where they're going to find the money. They might have to come and ask your class for some advice. Anyways, the answer to that won't be. Uh, revealed until later in this unit. 
Now, this is more personal and this has to go a lot more, this has a lot more to do with specifically what we will be discussing in this unit. So listen to this personal application and if you want, you could scan that QR code. I don't know if it's there or wherever it is on the video, you can go ahead and scan it. Um, personal application. Dagmar is becoming interested in investing some of her money. However, she has heard about several corporations in which the investors lost all of their money. In the past several years, Dagmar has heard that Lehman Brothers 2008, Chrysler 2009, and Six Flags 2009 all have filed for bankruptcy. These firm stockholders lost their entire investments in these firms. Many of the stockholders who lost money were employees of these companies who had invested some of their retirement money in the company stock. Dagmar wonders what guarantee she has as an investor against losing her money. If you remember in that first class, we did this, or not first class, in our last class, we did talk about different types of investments. What's the safest investment but you know the safest investment will not give you a lot of money in return and on the other hand the more risky investments like these examples here could give you a lot of money in return but they're a lot more risky and as you see some of these investors lost all of their money so there's a balance and to be perfectly honest there is no one right answer for everybody everybody has to figure out that balance for themselves and by the end of this course, you will be able to figure out that balance. You will be able to know like how much money should I put in investments? How much money should I put in bonds? How much money uh, should I keep in the bank account? You know, you'll be able to get all of that information by the end of this course. But again, that's for later on. So let us continue. We're still within the same book. Do you know what finance entails? That's actually part of the question you have to answer, right? Where are we on time? Okay. Do you know what finance entails? How financial management functions within the business world? Why you might benefit from studying financial principles? This chapter is the ideal place to get answers to the, those questions. Finance, trivia, you know, you may want to write this down as a vocabulary term. Finance is the study of applying specific value to things we own, services we use, and decisions we make. Examples are varied as shares of stock in a company, payments on a home mortgage, the purchase of an entire firm, and the personal decision to retire early. In this text, we focus primarily on one area of finance, financial management, which concentrates on valuing things from the perspective of a company or a firm. One note about these vocabulary terms, know that when we're in a test, you're not gonna have your headphones in, so no, you cannot listen to me saying these definitions, just in case anybody was thinking that we're not doing that, all right? So definition right here, finance. What is finance? Finance is the study of applying specific value to things we own, services we use, and then the decisions we make. We need to go over this slide right here. Let's talk about it. There's a few, a few words, trivia words we can learn, especially for those of you who took accounting applications. In finance, cash flow, that's an accounting term, is the term that describes the process of paying and receiving money. It makes sense to start our discussion of finance with an illustration of various financial cash flows. We use simple graphics to help explain the nature of finance and to demonstrate the different sub areas of the field of finance. After we have an overall picture of finance, we will discuss four important variables in the business environment that can and do have significant impact on the firm's financial decisions. These are one, the organizational form of the business, 
Two, the agency relationship between the managers and the owners of the firm. Remember, the manager is not the owner. The manager of a McDonald's, for example, is not the owner or the CEO of McDonald's. Technically, CEO can't, is possibly not the owner either. Um, three, ethical considerations as finance is applied in the real world. And four, the source and implications of the current financial crisis. Is there a current financial crisis? We'll talk about it. I'm looking at the time right now because of those two videos taking up a bit of time. I think this is where we're going to stop with this video. But don't worry. We'll continue next class. So we're going to leave off on this slide. Uh, once again, we already discussed your first assignment. You're going to be doing that in class. It's going to be for a grade. And then we will continue on with that packet. Um, that first assignment should be pretty easy, right? Watch the video, say what information you need, and then we'll continue next class. That's it for this video. This is the first of hopefully many of this style of YouTube homework videos for you to watch. Um, make sure you give me some feedback. Let me know what was good, what worked, what didn't. Was the audio good? Uh, was the background music okay? You know, all of that, just let me know. We'll discuss it in class and I'll see you next class. Bye.